What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. Hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you had a great weekend. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up, man? How you guys doing? I'm okay. I've been really cranky. Uh, I've been on Chantix and I've been trying to quit smoking. I've cut back like a lot. I used to smoke like 30, 35 cigarettes a day, like a lot. Now I'm down to like eight and a vape. So I'm working on it, but the Chantix, the side effects are affecting me. I had one of the most vivid dreams I've ever had in my life. It was scary. It was as deep. Uh, and it was as real as talking to a person face to face. I remember all the details of it. It's crazy. And that, like, I don't, I smoke so much piff. I don't typically dream. So it affected me deeply. And not to mention the first time I took it, I threw up. And it has weird side effects. So hopefully, uh... If I continue taking it, that kind of chills out. But enough about me. I've been getting a question a lot on this channel. And it is, what does a man do if he's charged with an essay or a bad beef and he's innocent? Well, first of all, we got to establish what is a bad beef. So a bad beef is anything with X assault or grape attached to it. That's a bad beef, 100%. Any kind of pornography, making, possessing, that involve children, 100% bad beef. Any violence against minors, abuse of a minor, neglect causing death of a minor, any charges like that, bad beef. Uh, and then there's gray area charges, right? There's stuff that it depends on where you land, what kind of joint you're in, what kind of guys are on your block when you land there. Like domestics or pimping, human trafficking, living off the avails. These kind of charges aren't necessarily looked good at. Like people don't necessarily look at guys with those charges and say, that's a solid dude right there. A lot of guys look at it like they're waste man charges and they're bad charges. So it's luck of, luck of the draw. Tell you the truth, luck of the draw, you know. Um, but uh, I think that there's only, you only have two options if that is the case. And let me just say, if anybody is charged with that stuff and they're innocent, that really sucks. It sucks that you selected so poorly. Um, somebody who gets that resentful that they're going to manufacture a charge to try and get your life destroyed is crazy to me. Um, and the fact that they take it that route rather than just make up some other kind of charge, like a domestic or something, is even crazier to me. Um, but let's be real. There's a lot of dudes that are running around out there that are bad. And those charges are real when they get arrested. So a lot of cons ain't going to give you a bly, ain't going to believe you, right? So you have two options. You can check into PC, right? You can go there, you can do your time, where most likely you're not going to be judged for your crime. It's still jail. And anybody who thinks because you go to protective custody, you're automatically safe is wrong. You know, some joints like the East, the protective custody range looks pretty serious. It's just bullies that have been bounced off ranges or guys that are scared to get jumped six, seven on one, but 100% prepared to fight one on one. So don't just think because you're going to check in the PC that everything's going to be hunky-dory and you're just going to do this great time in protective custody. Not to mention, every time you go to court, you're in the bullpens downstairs and everybody will see your face standing alone in that cell. And that can't be a good feeling. People goofing you up, burden you up, trying to spit on you when they're walking by. These kind of things will happen. But... Um, in the federal system specifically, it's a reality that there, because of integration, there are a lot of hounds hidden throughout the population. But believe me when I tell you, they are not there 
um, openly. They're hiding what they're there for. And if Google or anybody finds out what they're there for, they will definitely be got or at the very least cracked off a block. I've seen a lot of times where guys just crack them because they, they don't necessarily know if it's true or uh, not everybody really wants to hurt people or fight people. And a lot of guys just aren't as tough as they claim to be. So they'll bounce guys rather than fight them. But a lot of guys find out you're on an SA charge, man. They're coming for you, bro. Like seriously coming for you. You know, they're not going to play around at all. It's not going to be a fair one because of your charges, bad charges. I remember a story um, when I was in the Ville. There's a lifer on the block and he had a friend that he used to talk to regularly. This long haired bird, dude. We all knew he was a bird, acted like a bird, looked like a bird. But his charges weren't bad. And back in those times, guys did paperwork parties. But he got taken out to court one day randomly, right? And when he came back, he was super weird, right? His behavior had changed. So uh, we ended up finding out that his charge that he got charged for was making and distributing aisled ornography, which is in the, in the ville at that time was a death sentence if that he stayed on that block. And that's exactly what was happening. Guys were masking up, arming up. In the ville, there's no knives bigger in any joint than there was in the ville. There was a metal shop active working every day. Guys had access to 10, 20, like all the different gauges of steel to, to a shear and a lathe and all these things. Guys were making swords. I've seen swords in the ville. Right, And this lifer who had a bit of heart for this guy because he knew him and talked to him for months, went to him and told him, bro, you need to get out of here because these guys are going to fuck you up. And what did he do? He cracked off the block right away. I remember the last time I was in reception, I was, I was on my bully shit, you know, in reception. There's so many weirdos. You have to control the block. Right? And if you don't, it's going to get out of hand. People are going to misbehave. There's so many weirdos that that has to be done. And I remember one day being all bozzled and yelling out of my cell, you know, anybody who's on bad charges, we're Googling your name. We're going to find out you're a goof. And bing, bing, red light goes off. Two guys bounce off the range. It was hilarious. And the one guy used to always give canteen to everybody. And we used to think, why is this guy so nice? It's exactly why he was so nice. And I did give a hound a bly one day. Uh, uh, I said he could leave or fight twice. Once was my celly in Fembrook. Um, he, he had told me that he was on good charges and people had told me he was good, right? This Inuit dude. But I had already assumed that he was not good. Um, people just had told me otherwise, right? And I, I assumed because people were talking to him he didn't seem like a weirdo, but one day I was walking laps and one of his homies, another Inuit dude, the Slifer guy, comes up to me and says, bro, he's no good. He's on bad charges. I cooked right back to my block, closed the door in the cell, called him out, said, bro, you're a goof? And he's like, well, well you know, so I bounced him off the cell. And in Fembrook, it's a good chance you're going to go to SEG if you do that. I didn't because they understood, right? And when he cracked out of the cell, after they came in to pack his stuff, and when they lifted his mattress, he had paperwork in the back far corner under his mattress, which was his paperwork. Uh, and he was clearly a goof on bad charges. So you gotta be careful nowadays with the people you associate with in the federal system. Um, you know, there was a time, a long time, where if you were from KP, Kingston Penitentiary, Bath, or Workworth, any of those places, you weren't considered general population. And it was because of the amount of hounds that you were accepting doing your time with. It's changed now because the way they've redesigned the system to, uh, to kind of allow gangs to not be put in the same prison. Um, so Workworth and Fembrook are one side and Collins Bay is the other side pretty much right you have a little bit of intermingling in this lower security joints but in the higher security joints not so much so uh your only other option which is your second option if you get charged with that stuff and it's not good is to come back to your block 
stand up and tell them exactly what you're charged with. Tell them that you're not guilty. And hopefully you walk off of that block alive one day. Um, it's a risk for sure. But for somebody like me who wouldn't go to PC, um, that's definitely the only choice that you have. And you have to hope that the reputation that you've built in the past, if you've done time in the past, is enough for people to believe you and to keep you safe. But to be honest, it probably isn't. You get charged with that stuff, you're in danger the whole time. And if there's any media on it, it's going to make you that much more at risk. So I'd say, what do you do? What do you do? You're fucked. That's what you do. And you have to fight it. Doesn't matter if they offer you a plea bargain for time served and you're fighting every day to save your life. You cannot accept that conviction. If it is a fake conviction, you cannot allow that person who made that conviction to win. In my life, I've had one set of charges that I was not guilty for. And it was drug charges. Nothing like this, right? But I fought it and I beat it. Why? Because I didn't do it. And uh, every time I was guilty of my charges, I pled guilty. Because when you do the kinds of crimes that I did and you're found or you're caught, you're typically caught red-handed or you're not caught at all, right? So, um, but I beat it. And I, it sucked. I had to sit down for seven months when I was totally innocent. I was angry. I was frustrated. And you'll probably sit down a lot longer than that if they're serious charges. But what choice do you have? What choice do you really have? It's not something you can wear on your jacket. I know a lot of guys will say, oh, whatever. If you can get out, plead guilty. You're not a criminal. You're not going to go back to jail. Who cares? You're registered. That is life ending. How are you going to have a relationship? How is anybody ever going to trust you in any circumstance around anybody in their family? It is life ruining. If somebody did that to me, man, I would seriously consider ending somebody's life over that. And it sounds crazy, but that is life destroying. You, you, you destroy one, you get destroyed. You know? Uh, I, I can't think of how bad of a person you have to be to make up that kind of a charge and try and throw it on somebody's jacket. And for anybody who's been charged with that, who isn't guilty, man, I feel sorry as hell for you. But the reality is, a lot of those guys who get charged, they are guilty. They are guilty. Or they wouldn't be in jail and they wouldn't be convicted. I know there are mistakes, but there's not as many mistakes in the system as you think. You know, if you go into a prison and you sit down with 100 people, 50 or 60 of those people are probably going to tell you they're innocent. But guess what? I did time there with all of them. They're not. You want to know a secret? You can't always trust a convict's word. Or I should say an inmate's word. Because you should be able to trust a convict's word. Although you can. You, can, you can't really trust anybody's word, to be real with it. Maybe your family. Maybe a one, two selected people in your life. But it's dangerous out here, man. And if you're out fucking people over and violating people in your life. Treating people like shit. Then these things happen, man. And sometimes... They happen when you're not. When you're a genuinely good person, somebody might be angry because you left or whatever, and they throw this on you. But I, I bet if that is the case, you fight it, you're probably going to beat it. it. Sucks though, man. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody's got to go back to prison. Nobody ever has to go through that that's what I do, but that's just not a reality, man. It's 2023. It's hard out here. And a lot of decisions we can make to try and support ourselves, our families and stuff in these hard times.
could land some people in jail or prison. That's just a reality. And my videos prepare those people for what to expect when they go in. And so when they go in, they have a little bit of an understanding and they don't create a bunch of drama and stuff because they're totally green and it'll help the guys on the inside. But ultimately the goal is that people listen to these stories, these situations, and they don't go to jail. I'll tell you about a guy I knew. So I knew a guy that was charged with, a, uh, wasn't a SA or a grape. It was a, uh, it's like a coercion. I forget what the name of the charge is, but he was 17. His girlfriend was 15 and her dad had him charged for not SA, I forget what the charge is called, but if I think about it, I'll let you know. But uh, so he had this charge on his paperwork. And I remember one day in the Ville, this is my first bid there, he threw it into the garbage. He's like, I'm tearing this page out, I'm throwing it in the garbage. Nobody can find out. And this is a guy that will stab you, you know, no games kind of dude. And he was scared. So he threw it in the garbage. Guess what? There's garbage guys that rip through all the garbage, organize, separate recycling, separate garbage. So somebody found the paperwork. This man covered himself in National Geographic shields, like a vest, went outside in the yard, two shanks up, and confronted the 16 or 17 dudes uh, in the course of the night that had a problem with him. There was a group of very serious guys. One guy who's known as the best fighter in the whole system, approached this man and he stood 10 toes and they understood the circumstances. Super rare. Just shows you though, that if anybody finds that stuff on your jacket, people that don't even know who you are, are coming for you. You know, that high school shit, man, high schoolers, you guys be careful, man. You know, guys that are running trains and tag teams and doing all this kind of stuff, be careful, man. Even if she's willing and she turns on you, you're never going to be able to explain to a court that she was down for that. So just be careful, make wise decisions in your life and treat people with respect and dignity. The women you're sleeping with, treat them with dignity, you know, you know. But hopefully we grow and we learn from our bad decisions in our lives and we make it positively uh, and give ourselves the best opportunity to thrive. That's what this is about. So if that answers your question, love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.